Magnifica, anima mea dominum, et exulta in spiritus meus, in meo salutari meo, cui are respectit humilitate mansile sue. Ex hoc beata medis en domnes generatione. Ia fets in prima magna qui potens est, et sanctum nomen eius. Et misericordia eius a progenie in progenie. Too loud, too loud, too loud. Okay, that's better. 
Hello everyone. Whoops, still too loud. Okay. Happy Joyful Mysteries Monday. And um, I'm a little bit discombobulated because uh, what very often happens is that I only get the inspiration about what to talk about after the rosary, uh, you know, a half an hour before the show starts or 40 minutes before the show starts. And I was frantically looking for um, a file on my computer. I would have loved to add it to what I'm going to be talking about after the rosary, but I couldn't find it. So it'll unfortunately not be in today's talk. But um, uh, today is the Feast of St. Athanasius. And uh, he is a huge theological hero in the church third, fourth century around then, and he defeated the heresy of Arianism. And all of this has to do with um, three persons in one God, basically the Trinitarian formula. So after the rosary, I am going to go to my favorite book here, Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma, and um, go out on a limb and try to talk about, there's uh, Ludwig Ott, try to talk about the various uh, heresies that were considered before the church settled on the correct formula for three gods, uh, three gods in one person, three persons in one God. Okay. So that's the plan for today. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit behind in setting up as a result, so it may and there may be a few cracks in the uh, course of the program that become visible. Okay, St. Michael, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin and destruction of souls. Amen. St. Joan of Arc, patron of France and patroness of our prayer group, we ask you now to fight this battle with us by prayer, just as you led your troops to victory in battle, you who were filled with the Holy Spirit and chosen by God. Help us this day with the favor that we're asking of you that we all receive the graces which will result in us making it to heaven with our loved ones, and that the current course of the world um, barreling towards the one world antichrist great reset enslavement of all humanity government be reversed and we be given an extended period of peace and a renewal of the spread of Christianity, and a renewal of the genuine Catholic faith in the Holy Catholic Church. Grant us by your divine and powerful intercession the courage and strength we need to endure this constant fight and to emerge victorious in this and all the tasks that God presents to us. We thank you, and we ask you for your continuing protection of God's people, St. Joan, pious daughter of the church. Pray for us. Okay. And um, prayer for the conversion of the Jews. Let's see which one I should choose. Um... I'll uh, say the prayer to St. Paul for the conversion of his people, the Jews. O holy apostle Paul of Tarsus, from your glorious place in heaven, look down upon the race you loved so well. True it is that many of them remain deaf to your ringing ears, ringing words of truth, and that some of them even stirred up persecution against you and your fellow believers, but you are so devoted to your people that you will to become a castaway for the sake of their conversion. Now that your glory is in heaven, obtain for your brethren the grace of repentance and conversion, so that they may finally take their rightful place in the great family of the Catholic Church. 
Amen. Okay, and I guess we're ready for the rosary. Now, let me remind you <laughs> that the um, during the hardcore prayer, during the rosary, the chat stream is either to inform me that something's going wrong or to uh, for prayer intentions. And, um, and, and, uh, so, so let's try to, you know, keep it as a part of the prayer and not as a side conversations alongside the prayer. And, uh, if there are side conversations, I do reserve the, um, I do reserve the right to, uh, time out side conversations. So, um, you know, that'll just be I don't know exactly how it works, but you probably, it won't appear on the chat stream and, and you'll get silenced for a couple of minutes. And if that happens, don't take it personally. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not with any prejudice. And I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for meditations on the rosary from St. Faustina's little prayer book here. That's why I've been distracted here, looking down. Uh, actually, they're mostly just scripture quotes, actually, rather than true meditations. But I thought I'd mix it up because we've been doing this now for, I'm tempted to say a couple of years. It may not be a couple of years, but it's certainly more than one year. So um, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and not just use... Um, the Father Dolindo meditations, even though they're really wonderful. So, okay. Focus, Roy, but it's Joyful Mysteries. And what better way to start the Joyful Mysteries than with a children singing? Okay, the uh, opening prayers for the Joyful Mysteries of the Rosary. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For an increase in faith, hope, and love, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The first joyful mystery, the Annunciation. <laughs> then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Whoops, I forgot the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven especially those most in need of thy mercy. 
The Second Joyful Mystery, The Visitation During those days Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she had entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Mary remained with her about three months. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The third joyful mystery, the birth of Jesus. The time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fourth joyful mystery, the presentation of the infant Jesus in the temple. Simeon said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fifth joyful mystery, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. Each year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover as they were returning the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. They journeyed for a day and looked for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, most holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and attain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let me put myself back up here for a moment. But, as you know, what does amen mean? What does amen mean we're about to do, I should say? If I can find it here. If I can find it here. I know I have it here. Here. Uh, yeah, I think this is where it is. Let's see if this works. Amen. 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 Sing it over. Amen. 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 See the baby. Walking oh, with the elders, oh, yeah. they marvel at his wisdom. Amen. 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 Whoops. Amen. Whoops. Amen. 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 
Amen. Sing it over. Amen. Oh well. I let it start a second time. I probably you probably wish I had a left it play a whole second time, but anyway, I didn't. I'll put myself back up here. And I see Jane had a question, Roy. So um uh put in the question right now. Anyway. Uh, I feel so guilty pulling down that amen for the second time. Amen, amen, amen. And mostly, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me lead that rosary. I miss Father Delindo, huh? These uh, scriptural um, uh, scriptural meditations before the rosary or scriptural passages before the rosary mysteries don't quite do the same thing. You may see that I have next to me they all look alike, let's face it. I, nobody knows what these guys from the 4th century looked like, 3rd century looked like. But um, this is Athanasius, um, who was the patriarch of Alexandria, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he lived uh, from 298 to 373, or thereabouts. You know, people lived just as long in the old days as they live today. They lived longer than they do today if they took the vaccine, by the way. Um, just wait. But anyway, uh, the reason why the average lifespan, if you look back in history, you'll see statistics like the average lifespan was 35 years, you know, in the 16th century, and now it's 70 years. It's not because people who lived to be 60 didn't make it until 90. It's because of all of the childhood deaths, all of the, all, actually all of the deaths in infancy, all of the deaths in the first few years which got averaged in. But in fact, you know, you see all of these church fathers living 80, 90, 100 years seriously. Um, so it's not, it's not that once we get old, we, we are healthier now than we were in those days. We're less healthy now when we get old. Um, and that's going to get worse and worse and worse as Frankly, you know, you're not listening to Dr. Mercola, but it's going to get worse and worse and worse um, as uh, unnecessary medications are given to people, like the vaccine, because the pharmaceutical companies want to make money and they've bought the politicians, and also because of the quality of the food. Um, you know, we are eating plastic now, we're eating chemicals now, we're eating all kinds of garbage now, we're eating tons of sugar and processed foods now. Um, one of the reasons my parents lived to, I believe, 98 and 102 and a half is because when they were growing up, food came either from the ground or from animals. <laughs> they didn't come from chemical factories. Um, well, Antonia, that's not a bad question. And the it's a good question. I'm not really sure I know the answer. Um, uh, so fine. I don't really know the answer. Uh, obviously there may be in some cases writings, um, or early depictions perhaps of the apostles or maybe not. I don't know. Everybody agrees that St. Paul was bald. <laughs> That's one reason I like him so much. Anyway, so let's see what that question was. Uh, um, and then I'm going to go into what I was talking about. It's at the question, Jane, meaning of so the thoughts of many will be revealed. Not a bad question. Could you guys stop asking such good questions? <laughs> meaning so the thoughts of many will be revealed. I don't have an answer to that. A sword will pierce her heart so that the thoughts of many will be revealed. Good question. Maybe I'll look into it. Also, good question, Antonia. So, St. Luke was an artist. St. Luke supposedly painted the um, Jehovah Madonna, right? Is that right? I think it's Jehovah Madonna that supposedly was painted by St. Luke. 
but I don't know if he did a self-portrait. Uh, Gregory, it was nice knowing you. I see you're literally eating soft serve vanilla cone right now. That probably never saw the inside of a cow. <laughs> you know that. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Now, St. Athanasius. Uh, why am I talking about him? I'm talking about him because it's his feast day today. And he is a doctor of the church. And he's, I believe he's a martyr, actually. Not 100% sure about that. But mostly, you, you know, we say the creed all the time, every rosary, right? Um, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, etc. And the uh, creed, um, and I, I, different, you know, there are several creeds that we sometimes say, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. But in any case, we know that the Most Holy Trinity is one person in three God. Excuse me, <laughs> I did this second time today. One God in three persons. St. Athanasius, whoops, St. Athanasius, please help me. I'm, I'm getting in trouble here. One God in three persons, uh, co-eternal with the Father. In other words, there was never a time when God the Father didn't exist. There was never a time when God the Son didn't exist. There was never a time when the Holy Spirit didn't exist. Nonetheless, the Son was begotten of the Father. Now, that's pretty confusing, right? Because wouldn't you think that if the Son was begotten from the Father, the Father existed before the Son was begotten? These things are not, are not simple. They're not obvious, let's say. They're certainly not obvious. And um, I feel a little bad for the heretics that got in so much trouble in the first few centuries because none of this stuff is obvious. I mean, one God in three persons, one in substance, one in being, one in co-eternalness, but three persons, okay? Uh, a true human nature, a true divine nature in Jesus. Um, one will, I think Jesus had one will, right? No, he had two wills. Did he have two wills or one will? In any case, the wrong answer to that is a heresy. Um, this stuff is not at all obvious. I'd better get rid of that St. Um, Athanasius picture because I'm just going to get in more trouble. So I figured in honor of St. Athanasius, I would read from Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma. I'll, and I'll try not to, <laughs> not to get things backwards as long as I'm reading. Okay. Um, okay. First, first problem. First problem. Three persons. Three persons in God, not just one person in God. You know, it took a while. Okay, and there was a heresy called monarchianism. And there were a bunch of heretics, mea culpa, they were Jewish, they, they came, they were Jewish Christians mostly. Um, certainly the Ebionites was an early group of Jewish Christians who held to the doctrine that there is only one person in God, and that although Christ was the Son of God, he wasn't God himself. He was sort of the Son by adoption. And in fact, one version of this was that he was the first um, act of creation of God. But nonetheless, he wasn't God himself. He was created by God. This is not true, by the way. This is a heresy. That means it's not true, but I'm I'm just trying to paint the background of all of uh, all of the confusion. I'll get to the filioque. Way. Remind me later. I want to st stick with the Trinity. I want to build from the base up. Um. So anyway, uh, then there is patripassionism. I like that word patripassionism which holds that Christ was true God, 
but there was also only one person in God, and God the Father, essentially, came down to earth and was crucified and suffered. Okay? So that's another way that you have only one God, one person in God. You can have one person in God and Christ not be God, or you can have one person in God and Christ be God, but the one person of God came to earth, not the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. Um, and um, then you have Arianism, which is actually where Athanasius comes in, because uh, St. Athanasius basically fought Arianism successfully. And Arianism, I will read this so I get into less trouble. And then you can tell me whether this makes sense to be doing this. Uh, anyway, Arianism is named after Arius, who was the main uh, priest who propagated this heresy. But, you know, again, I don't think they're necessarily bad guys, because this stuff is not obvious, and it's impossible to understand. So anyway, it has to be revealed, essentially, and it was revealed through the church councils and through these, you know, church fathers who had, you know, divine inspiration. But it's not, it's not like, it's not like incredibly stupid to believe these things, right? It's how can anyone know? But anyway, um, so anyway, Arius taught that the Logos did not exist from all eternity, and he was not generated by the Father, but he is a creature of the Father, produced by him from nothing before all other creatures. Okay, so the Son of God, Jesus Christ, really was the Son of God. He really was the Logos, but he wasn't co-eternal with God. He was actually a creature created by God before the creation of anything else. Therefore, in his essence, he is unlike the Father, because the Father, in his essence, is, is eternal. Eternal, remember, I don't know if I have this word right, but eternal not, mean, not only meaning that he lives forever and ever, but eternal meaning there was never a time when he didn't exist. And, but if, if uh, in Arianism, there was a time before Christ existed, and therefore, he was not part one in substance and being with the Father. So, I guess that's enough, actually. Um, there, there are tons, tons of these um, confusing um, heresies. And, uh, but I don't know if it really, um, if it really matters too much. Um, let me, uh, uh, let me, um, let me address this business. I have to look it up in the index of one will versus two wills. One forty-six. Uh, this is why, I mean, I really love this book because, because while I'm reading this book, this stuff makes sense to me and is clear, but as soon as I put it down, it all disappears into a fog once again. Okay, um, we know that Jesus Christ had true nat two natures, a true divine nature and a true human nature, and um, the uh, teaching of the church, which you have to believe, it's de fide, it's you're sinning if you don't believe it, is that in the hypostatic union, if the in the union of the two natures, divine nature and human nature in Christ, each of the two natures continues unimpaired, untransformed, and unmixed with the other. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'll try to wrap your mind around that. The two natures are unmixed with each other, but it, we know that's true. Um, the uh, there was a heresy of. Um, monophysitism, which suggested that Christ was o not only one person, but also only one single nature. Christ is one person, of course, but it held that he was he only had a um, single nature. And um, some thought that the his human nature was transformed into his divine nature. 
or his human nature was absorbed into the divine nature, or the two natures, human and divine, were mixed into a new third nature, a mixed nature. Or you could have Rudolf Steiner, are you with us, Elizabeth, who held, I believe, that um, essentially God, do I have this right? According to Rudolf Steiner, I'm not sure. But that essentially the human Christ was possessed by the divine Christ, sort of like a possessed person gets possessed by the devil. I'm not 100% sure of that. That's clearly another heresy. Okay, so that is that is the issue of the two natures have to be uh, unimpaired, untransformed, and unmixed with each other. Um, we saw some examples of one nature being transformed into the other. I think you're, you're all ready for bed now. But anyway, then we have the heresy of monothelitism, which is that in Christ there are two, two natures, but only one will, the divine will, and only one mode of activity. And um, that is also a heresy. It's de fide, which means it's you're sinning if you don't believe it. The Son God incarnated into Jesus. Okay, I'll have, I, I have a little side comment to give Elizabeth and any other anthroposophist uh, refugees from anthroposophy out there in a moment. Anyway, so the teaching of the church is that, yes, there are two natures in Christ, and each of those two natures possesses its own natural will and its own natural mode of operation. So they're not two natures with one will, they're two natures with two wills. This stuff is not simple. Um, and, uh, okay. I know that it was Rudolf Steiner said that, not you, Elizabeth. Um, okay. A little side note just to show how, how, uh, twisted my path was. Uh, when I went through anthroposophy, this may only make sense to Elizabeth and maybe not even to her. But um, once I got sold out on the Catholic Church, I spent some time in a Catholic offshoot of anthroposophy. The followers of Valentin Tomberg, you know, Valentin Tomberg, Elizabeth. And I hung out with a woman who uh, was a um, occultist. An initiate, Elizabeth knows what that means, an initiate. Um, I'm drawing a blank on her name, thank goodness. Now I just remembered it, but I'm not going to mention it. And uh, this cult tried to absorb me, tried to recruit me. Everyone in this cult was the reincarnation of somebody really, really big in history, you know? We had uh, the cult leader's daughter was the reincarnation of St. Francis. The cult leader's son was the reincarnation, if I'm not mistaken, of Socrates, I think, or Aristotle, one of those. Um, the uh, cult leader herself, I believe, was the reincarnation of Rudolf Steiner, and they really wanted to recruit me. So they made me the reincarnation of trumpet player Jesus Christ. Now, by the time they told me that, I knew I'm out of here. Um, but anyway, there you have it. And, um, when I was hanging around with anthroposophy, uh, actually it was, it was also the Tom Bergian stream. It was also this, um, uh, pseudo Catholic stream actually. And, um, I knew a young lady, she was, uh, Dutch and, uh, she was an anthroposophist, Tom Bergian anthroposophist. Yeah, Valentin Tomberg led me to the Catholic Church, too, in a way. Uh, anyway, she was a Catholic anthroposophist. And um, th she taught in a Rudolf Steiner school, a Waldorf school. And she was a very attractive young lady. And apparently there was another anthroposophist who taught in the school who wanted to, excuse the expression, bed her. And he was successful because he informed her 
that he was the reincarnation of Jesus and she was the reincarnation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so they had to hook up together. <laughs> Excuse me. This stuff should be laughed at. I, I don't mean to be blasphemous, but that's how ridiculous it gets. Anyway, unbelievably absurd. Unbelievably absurd. Um, and uh, anyway, thank God. Th uh, thank the Blessed Virgin Mary, actually. It was the Blessed Virgin Mary's protection, I think, that pulled me out of you know, that anthroposophy um, and that Tombergian anthroposophy. By the way, um, boy, I'm going to get in trouble here, but I don't mind getting in trouble. Um, Hans, Hans Ur von Balthasar, who some of you may know, he's a well-respected Catholic theologian in some ways, uh, he is a bit of a Tombergian. He's more of a bit of a Tombergian. And if you get a copy of Valentin Tomberg's magnum opus, please don't, called Meditations on the Tarot, you will find a glowing preface, or maybe introduction, written by Hans Urs von Balthasar. Not a good sign. Very cult-like. Anyway. Okay, now the... Um, uh, the filioque, just to wrap up all of the, uh, the filioque business, I, I actually am not sure. I'll find out in a moment if I can find it, actually. Um, Holy Ghost, um, Procession from Father and Son, page 61. I don't know how you can survive without this book, um, so to speak. You don't have to buy it. It's on the internet for free. But um, things get so confusing. Anyway. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay, here goes. Um... Uh, Antonio, I kind of agree with you, but please somebody tell uh, Hans or Svan Balthasar that the Tarot is a cult and forbidden by the church. And um, the, uh, he, I, I mean, I don't want to, anyway, if you look into things, you can see that, that there are even some recent popes who's, who were fans of von Balthasar. Okay. Okay. This is, this is, this is De Fide. So this means it's definitely true. That's another great thing about this book, by the way, is it distinguishes between things you have to believe and just things that the church traditionally believes. So it, it, it um, basically distinguishes between dogma. Dogma is De Fide. It's of the faith. If you don't believe in it, you're sin sinning and just doctrine that doesn't rise to the level of dogma okay in god there are two internal divine processions did you know that you have to believe that there are two internal divine processions by procession is understood the origin of one from another one distinguishes external procession and internal procession a procession is said to be an external when the terminus of the procession goes outside the principle from which it proceeds Thus, creatures proceed by external procession from God, their primary origin. But the processions of the Son and Holy Ghost are an imminent act of the Most Holy Trinity, an internal divine procession. This is pretty cool and pretty bizarre, or pretty hard to understand. But So the Son processes from the Father, and the uh, Holy Ghost processes from the Father, but they don't leave the Father. They don't go external to the Father. They stay within the essence and being of the Father. An internal divine procession signifies the origin of a divine person from another through the communication of the numerically one divine essence. I'm not going to try to explain that. The creeds teach us that there are two internal divine processions, the begetting of the Son and the procession of the Holy Ghost. 
By reason of these processions, there are in God three persons really distinct from one another. Now, I don't think this, I don't think this, uh, oh, oh, this is, this is neat. <laughs> Not that I understand a word of it. Okay, so we have these two internal per uh, divine processions from the Father. We have the Son processes from the Father, but stays within the essence and being, that's why it's three persons in one God, and the Holy Ghost processes in an internal divine procession from the Father, stays within the being and essence, of course. However, they're different because the second divine person proceeds from the first divine person as a generation and it is therefore related to him as a son to a father. So the first and second persons stand to each other in the relationship of a true and proper fatherhood and sonship. Okay, whereas the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and from the Son as from a single principle through a single spiration. So the Holy Ghost proceeds as a spiration, not as a generation. Don't ask me what this means. I have no idea what it means. I'm just reading, <laughs> okay? Um, and the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son as a spiration. Yes, the Holy Sp Spirit proceeds from both the Father and the Son. That's what I just read. I'll repeat that. Naja, thanks for your question or comment. Quote, and this is de fide, this is dogma. The Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and from the Son as from a single principle through a single spiration. Okay? And that is the filioque uh, problem. Because the... Western, the, the Catholic Church teaches that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and from the Son. And if I'm not mistaken, the Greek Orthodox Church and therefore the Eastern Orthodox Churches that are not united with Rome teach that the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father alone. In other words, excuse me, I'm oversimplifying. But it's like, it's like, I, I mean, I, you know, you don't want really competition among, among the three persons of God. But in a sense, the tendency is to think in the Western church that you have God the Father, and then in some sense below him, God the Son, and then in some sense below him, God the Holy Spirit. There's a little bit of a hierarchy there that goes Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is not dogma. I, I could be mistaken, in other words. This is me trying to put it through my, process it through my own brain. Uh, whereas the Eastern Church, it wants to keep very solidly that God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, that there's no relative inferiority of the Holy Spirit to God the Son. So it doesn't want to say that the Holy Spirit proceeds from both the Father and the Son, but it wants to say that the Holy Spirit uh, proceeds, proceeds only from the Father and the Son proceeds only from the Father. That's the filioque uh, issue. Filioque means and the Son. And so the, um, e the Eastern Orthodox churches are not happy that the creed used by the Catholic Church is the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. So that's basically it. The Holy Ghost, uh, there's no question about it, the Catholic Church teaches that the Holy Ghost is sent not only from the Father, but also from the Son. And in fact, that the Holy Ghost receives his knowledge from the Son, I, I'm not saying that's dogma. That's certainly church teaching, but it may be little, little t teaching. Um, and uh, 
Let me see if this says anything about no. Uh, it doesn't actually discuss the uh, teaching in detail of the uh, Eastern Orthodox. Okay, here, I'll read this. This is as close as I can get, probably. Since the ninth century, the Greek Orthodox Church has taught that the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father alone. A synod at Constantinople in the year 879 rejected the Filioque of the Latins, that's us Latins, as heretical. In contrast to this, the Second General Council of Lyon, 1274, declared, <laughs> The Holy Ghost eternally proceeds from the Father and the Son as from one principle and by one spiration. Repeated, um, you know, repeated at a number of other councils. So, that's it. That's more than I know about the Most Holy Trinity, that's for sure. But um, in honor of St. Athanasius, I'll bring him back here. I certainly need his help. There. In honor of St. Athanasius and to kind of explain why it's such a big deal that um, these uh, issues got resolved. Um, I just wanted to go through some of the underlying issues uh, before we got to the creed that we have. So anyway, um, oh yes, Antonia, thanks a lot. You're really, you're really running on all 12 cylinders today. Um, now I'm not speaking with any authority, but you guys, if you've heard my witness testimony, know that I asked the Blessed Virgin Mary in my dream of her, what's this business about the Holy Spirit? And she said, he's the look, he's the gaze that passes. What, what was the exact word? Oh no, yeah, that's right. She, uh, she said, he's his gaze. That's actually all she said. It was, she, he's his gaze. So I guess that doesn't really answer whether the Holy Ghost proceeds from both the Father and the Son or only from one. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas said the Holy Ghost is the look of love that passes between the Father and the Son. I guess a, it's a mutual love, so I guess that it's the Holy Ghost is proceeding from both the Father and the Son, although in opposite directions. I don't understand a word of this. I'm just telling you what different people say. How can the church know these things? Very good question. And the answer is, <laughs> it's actually revelation. It's actually revelation. Um, the basic understanding is that that's what you have church councils for. And uh, when there is an issue that has to be resolved, the church calls a council and the council fathers debate the issue and the Holy Spirit guides the debate and guides the understanding of the council fathers such that the decision reached by the council is in effect divine revelation. Even though it's come through that council, it's come through the council fathers. And that this dynamic is in fact the fundamental guarantee that um, you know the, the gates of hell will not prevail against it and that the church will teach the truth until either the end of time or 1963. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Don't want to get in too much trouble, but you know what I mean. So basically that's the, um, that is the infallibility of the magisterium. And it's supposed to be basically guided by the Holy Spirit through uh, through the uh, church councils, and also through actually also through um, what's the word uh, um, the 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 Pope teaching ex cathedra uh, teaching from his chair, but the infallibility of the Pope actually was only determined 
at the First Vatican Council in 1863 or so. So the idea of the papal infallibility is relatively new, whereas the um, infallibility of councils is very old. So anyway, I'll find out in a few minutes whether I ran afoul of Moises or not. Um, got all dogma by gospel and holy inspiration. Yep. I'm thinking I stated that incorrectly two persons, but only one being a human person and divine person, but only a divine being with the human nature. I, I don't know what Evelyn is talking about there. Um, but, um, My understanding is that Jesus is one person, one person with two natures, one person. Um, he's not a human person and a divine person. He's a divine person with a human nature and a divine nature. Um, <laughs> don't burn me at the stake. Just tell me I'm wrong if I'm wrong. But uh, he's certainly not two persons. And as a matter of fact, um, He's true man. He's true man because he has a true uh, human nature. Uh, you know, I need my wife for this because because she knows what a person is. I don't know what a person is once you get into this deep water. So, look, uh, I don't like to make stuff up. Let's see what Moises said through theology, through the heresies that cause death. Yes, all these things actually do kind of require heresies in order to get resolved by church councils. Um, and in principle, nothing can be dogma. Dogma is infallible because it can't, because basically God will not allow it to be pronounced as dogma if it's an error. And there is a very famous case, I think it was Pope Alexander VI, although Moises can correct me, and I'm not joking, Moises probably can correct me, and please do. But there was a pope who was a very bad pope. He was a Borgia pope, if I'm not mistaken. And he came up with his own translation of sacred scripture. And he was going to promulgate it, uh, you know, to replace uh, St. Jerome's, I think. And he died the night before he made his translation, the official translation of the church. And it's understood that he died because God wasn't about to allow him to to officially pronounce that a faulty translation was the dogmatic, you know, the, the, the dogmatic yardstick of the church, or the official translation of the church. Yeah, Jesus has to be one person in two natures. Okay. From the Baltimore Catechism. Yeah, we could do worse than going back to the Baltimore Catechism. Anyway, I've been talking now. It's been an hour and a quarter. That's that's pretty much my my uh, limit, my quota, especially when I'm <laughs> confusing you instead of leading you right. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting. And um, Roy, I thought that the Holy Spirit proceeded from both the Father and the Son. Yeah, the Holy Spirit does proceed from both the Father and the Son. That's dogma. I, I read that a little bit earlier. Okay. Thanks a lot for bearing with me. And uh, tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, I certainly won't be here at this time. I don't know exactly what to do. My court date is on 1.30. Prayers are welcome. It's a really small thing, but, but um, I was driving to the airport to catch a flight for my mission trip to Colorado. So this was whenever it was, about three weeks ago. And um, I was a little bit late. I wasn't terribly late, but I was late compared to how early they ask you to be there. And I was in the right-hand lane turn to make a right-hand lane on a street because, because the light at that corner was red. And I knew that I don't have to wait for the light if I make a right-hand turn lane, even though it wasn't quite the shortest way. So I figured I'm, I'm better off making the right-hand turn than waiting for the light. And what happened when I got to the front of the right-hand lane is that the light turned green. So I said, aha, 
best of both worlds. I can continue going straight and take the slightly faster route. However, there was a policewoman who did not think it was very nice that I had been in the right turn lane and decided not to make a right turn. And she gave me a rather serious ticket, actually, for careless driving. Never mind, but I don't think it was very careless in the sense that I, you know, nothing was going to happen. I wasn't about to hit another car or anything. But uh, in any case, that's what she did. And so I have to go to court. And uh, I don't want to get a strike against me for careless driving. So that's that. But in any case, I don't know how long it's going to take me. So so I, I can't do the show this time tomorrow. So I'll probably not have a show tomorrow. But um, anyway, we'll see. I may get inspired. But if I do the show, it's going to have to be a lot earlier or uh, a little bit later or a lot later. So anyway. Put a Biden button on and I'll be off scot-free. I'm in Florida, Jane, so I hope that's not true. And by the way, just so that I make sure everyone hates me, I did get a lawyer for this. I, I, I'm not sure I should have, but I talked to a lawyer and he said that the, 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 the police woman was a young woman. She was like a 30-year-old woman. He said, they're the worst. They're the worst. Um, they're always ridiculous because they have to prove to everyone that they're tougher than the guys, you know, that they're not pushovers. So they have to be meaner and tougher than anybody else because they are a young woman. So anyway, that's what the lawyer told me. Um, so there you have it. Okay. Bye all. I'll put up the opening screen and everything. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Um, copy. What is my opening screen? Oh, okay. There's my opening screen, but I think I'm going to put up St. Saint, Saint, um, Athanasius, in fact. Maybe I'll just put him up over, over the, that, okay. Okay, I'll put him up on that side. I'll put myself up small so that I can fade out gracefully. And okay, so first of all, here's the screen. And I'll put up the music and I will disappear. Spiritui 
Magnifica, anima mea dominum. Ego 
misericordatos misericordie sui. Exaltavi tu mi 